Hello everyone. Yes, the church needs purging of paedophiles and has brought in tough guidelines to throw them out. But what of abusers in schools and families? Sexual abuse of minors is not a Catholic problem. And that the blowtorch directed at the church on this issue reveals something unhealthy about society around us. What had begun to be talked of in the 60s has become a problem so endemic that it seems at times too big to be tackled. And rather than tackling it, we have created a surrogate, the Catholic Church, to take the flack which belongs on a far, far wider scale. Now, the statistics are scattered about, but not hard to find. Professor Charles Shakes Shaft of Virginia University studied 290,000 cases of alleged abuse in the 10 years between 1991 and 2000. Out of a sample of 225 teachers who admitted to sexually abusing a pupil, not a single case as was reported to the authorities. Yet, the John Jay College of Criminal Justice Study of 2004, independent auditors commissioned by the US bishops found 10,667 people who made allegations about sexual abuse by priests and religious in the 52 years between 1950 and 2002, roughly 200 a year, compare, compared to 29,000 a year in public schools. The allegations were made against 4,392 priests, of whom 56% were accused of only a single incident, some of which were never proved. Also, odious as it is, in only about 20% of the above number of errant priests were children involved. As a result of the Dallas norms introduced by the U.S. Catholic Church in 2002 last year, the entire Catholic Church in the U.S., which has 65 million members, received, yes, received six contemporary allegations of clerical abuse. In the U.K., where the Nolan report of 2001 led to strict guidelines, the Catholic Church is unique among institutions for making public each year the number of allegations of sexual abuse by priests. For 2007, the number of such contemporary allegations was precisely four for the whole of the UK in a church of about five million at least in the UK and the US, we can now state with confidence that the Catholic Church in the UK is one of the safest environments for children and young people. Who else can claim this? A recent Associated Press into sexual abuse by American teachers found that in the five years between 2001 and 2005, over 2,500 teachers were convicted of sexual abuse. That's 500 a year compared to six priests. Associated Press discovered that most of the abuse never gets reported and cases reported often end in no action. And no one, not the schools, not the courts, not the state or federal governments, has yet found a reliable way to keep abusive teachers out of classrooms. In Sweden's secular state schools, a recent study found that 60% of the girls and 40% of the boys have been abused. Even in Ireland, at the height of the abuse scandal exposed by the Murphy Report, the number of pupils that had been sexually abused never exceeded 5%. 
Consider Britain, where the latest yearly report from the NSPCC gives a figure of 29,000 sexual abuse allegations in 2009. There wasn't a word in the papers about this. I wonder why. Priest convictions included in this number you can count on one hand. Are we missing something? More than 75% of all sexual abuse of minors happens in the family, perpetuated by family members, mostly those who are married, and by others known to the victims. Most of it is never spoken about. Only seldom is a relative denounced. Now, thanks to the media, the Catholic Church has been brought to task. Its failures have been highlighted and reforms have been put in place, above all by Pope Benedict XVI. He has been the first Pope to meet with victims, to lift the wall of silence, to fast-track the punishment of priests through laicization. He promises action and is delivering. Guidelines of the sort that exist in the US and the UK are being drawn up for application in the Universal Church. The Church is definitely putting its house in order. But when it is in order, what then? Will public opinion then be able to turn to what has been going on behind closed doors, in the heart of families, under the veil of silence, in a far greater numbers, and for far longer, and with far greater impunity? Who, in those places, can the media hold to account? Who there can introduce Catholic Church-style guidelines and reforms? Thank you all now very much for listening and God bless you all. Oh.